through him who sits on the throne. We love your name. We love your name. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Vineyard. Say good morning to your neighbor. What's up, guys? And say good morning to somebody across the rows. Hello, Anne Marie. And then say good morning to our Facebook family. Good morning. So good to see everybody. We are happy you've joined us this morning. We're going to worship with music, and then uh, Denise is going to bring the word, and then we're going to have some ministry time, and uh, we're just going to invite the Holy Spirit to uh, just be present in a mighty way, um, yeah, to do what he's going to do this morning. Um, so Holy Spirit, come. We just thank you, and, and we love that you love each one of us, and we love that, that there's a faithfulness that no matter what we can give, that you, you give more, and you, you meet us in that, that place. Be here this morning in all the needs and all the wants, in the valleys and on the mountaintops, and we just thank you that... You're a God of all splendor. So come, change our hearts, open our eyes and our ears. And we want to hear you and we want to see you. And we want to feel just a fresh touch from you, Holy Spirit. And we just thank you for, again, that faithfulness to us. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. So whatever posture of worship you like, if you like standing or sitting, we just welcome the freedom. Again, just watch for your neighbor. If you're an airplane worshiper, just make sure your arms length apart. So, um, but yeah, welcome. your glory dressed up in frailty just to come and kneel you made yourself nothing slow as a servant and you came and kneel you were obedient living a life of love Cross. But you 
I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind As I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name Jesus, till every dark addiction starts to break, declaring there is hope and there is freedom, I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing. Your name is life. So break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Oh, 
Jesus from the mountain, Jesus in the street, Jesus in the darkness of an every enemy, Jesus for my family, I Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountain. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. You got one more in you, here we go, shout. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus. 
I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be with you, Vineyard Church. Um, we were, Lori and I were at a family reunion last week in the Nashville, Tennessee area. And uh, we were at a little Baptist church on Sunday morning uh, for worship. And uh, it made me really appreciate our worship team. Uh, <laughs> um, it was a very small church, uh, probably half or less the size of ours, um, and they, they had three, three singers and karaoke tracks, um, but it was worship, and it was good, and, uh, and I appreciate ours too. Uh, so anyway, welcome to the Vineyard Community Church. We're glad that you're here to join us. Um, and uh, for all of you at home watching on Facebook, welcome. Uh, you're faithful, and we are glad that you're with us today as well. Uh, Pastor Denise Dwarning is finishing our series, Why Are We Here and Where Are We Going? And today's message is called, We Are Commanded to Love One Another. And the scripture is found in John, one of my four favorite gospels. Uh, John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. Grab your Bible or your cell phone and look up today's text. You also find it written in the bulletin along with the section to take notes. Uh, we are asking that you would be in prayer this week for all of the vineyard staff from this church and for the vineyard church nationally. They're having their national convention down in Black Rock, Tennessee, uh, North Carolina. Black Mountain, North Carolina, and uh, 11 of us from this church are traveling down uh, today, yesterday, today, and, and tomorrow, and uh, we'll, we'll all be there along with uh, 
I don't know, probably 1,500 other people from around the country. And we'll be there through Friday morning. Should be a great time. Please be in prayer for the church and prayer for us. Uh, sign up. Uh, the Vineyard Resource Center is closed this week, uh, both Monday and Tuesday, because the staff is gone. Um, see you the following week, August 7th and 8th. Sign up in the lobby today for the Women's Workshop and Brunch uh, this coming Saturday, August 5th, from, t from noon to 2.30 p.m. The title is Jesus Gives Hope, and he does. He gives us hope. Praise God. Sign up also if you'd like to bring an ingredient for the sandwich and salad brunch. Next Sunday, August 6th, consider attending the fest uh, here in Wycliffe. Uh, there'll be a few thousand other people, <laughs> a, lo a lot of people joining, uh, but it's free. Um, it's a wonderful event, and uh, God is praised all day long, and uh, it's a day of faith and family and fun. Uh, don't forget today's offering. We have a small table set up in the back uh, of the sanctuary for your offering. You can donate with Zell. You can donate on, on the uh, um, church's website or on Facebook. If you donate on Zell, there's no charge uh, uh, to the church. Or if you give here at the church, there's no charge to the church. Uh, so anyway, uh, God bless you all, and Pastor Denise is going to come up now. Got to get my Kleenex. Good morning. How's everybody today? Good? Blessed? I like to hear that. I'm blessed. I am blessed to be with you today. I am blessed to be standing here today and be a vessel that God's going to use to speak to your hearts today. Oh my gosh, I just saw Marcy. Hi, Marcy. You traveled a long way to see me today. <laughs> I don't think there's anyone here that doesn't know me, but just in case there is, I'm Denise Dorning. I'm one of the pastors here at the church. Um, I don't get the chance to do this often, but... That's changing, so. Oh, Father God, we just thank you so much that we're able to freely sit and, and worship today, that we're free, able to freely sit and just love you and, and join together without the threat of, of someone crashing in and, and, and stopping it, someone crashing in and telling us we can't do it. We thank you for that freedom that we have, Lord. We thank you that your spirit is resting heavy in this place. We thank you for our awesome worship team that opened up the gates and just ushered in your presence. Lord, we ask for more of you. We ask for more of your presence to be here. I pray, Father God, for each and every person here and those online that they will just feel a fresh sense of who you are today. In your precious name I pray, amen. Well, I was asked... Um, about a month and a half ago to speak at a youth event, a Project Timothy event. And I was like, uh, I don't have time to do that. Stuff's really busy, I really can't do that. And then um, I did my due diligence and I prayed. I said, okay, God, if you want me to do this, I'll do it. And he said, oh, I do, and you will. So I picked up the phone right then and called the, the young man that called me and asked me to do it and said, I'm in. And he said, oh, we want you to speak on the Father heart of God. So I was like, huh, okay, I can do that. I can do that. I believe that that preempted this. I believe that God took that opportunity to get me to really tap into his heart and to really understand who he was so that I can I can give his message freely today. 
I have to tell you that, you know, the, the subject matter is we are commanded to love one another. But I truly don't believe that we can love one another if we don't receive his love. How do you give something that you haven't received? How do you f- let something flow through you that you feel you don't deserve to receive? It's, to me, I think it's virtually impossible. I think it's virtually impossible to love others and, and walk out this command if you don't first receive God's love for yourself. And I prayed, I said, okay, God, tell me what, tell me, how, how do I do this? What do I do? And he said, I've got four words for you. I want you to tell them, I love them because I said so, period. To remind you, it has nothing to do with what you do or don't do. It has nothing to do with you. It's all about him. He wants each and every person here and and in Facebook land, he wants you to know that. There is nothing that you can do to earn his love. He loves you because he says so, period. It's all about him. So if you're walking through life feeling like, I don't deserve it, how can he love me? Why would he love me? Because he says so, period. The God that created you, the the one that knitted you perfectly, knitted you in your mother's womb from the very beginning said, I love this person and I will always love this person. If you can receive that, then you can listen to the message today. Who wants to receive that? Who believes that beyond a shadow of a doubt that God loves you? Oh, there's some hands that aren't up. Makes me a little nervous. He sent his son here for the sole purpose to teach us how to love. who then turned around, sacrificed himself by climbing up on that cross for you and you and you and me. He took all the pain. He took all the punishment that we deserved because we are all sinners. I've said this before, even Wilmer Bishop. Do you believe that? She loves to agree with that because it's true. We are all sinners. The word says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23, that was one of their memory verses. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but he loves you anyway. He, He loves you anyway. It doesn't matter. He knows that you are not perfect because he made you perfectly imperfect for his purposes receive that receive that for God so loved the world he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life the truth behind that the reason that this verse is so often referred to is because it beautifully articulates God's love and how it was put into action There's no way that you can bottle up God's love. It's so massive, so huge. You can't even possibly wrap your head around the depths of love that God has for you. But he tried to show us by bringing his son here and allowing his son to take on the weight of all of our sin from yesterday, today, tomorrow, take it all on himself and climb up on that cross and stretch out his arms and say, I love you this much. Don't ever forget it. 
God has a, had a specific design and process for us to experience real love in real life. Christ's love compels us because we're convinced that one died for all of us. Therefore, we all died. He died for all of us so those that live will no longer live for ourselves. We should live for him who died and rose again. I believe he's calling hearts today. I believe he's tapping on hearts to surrender. I've had a, a recent discussion with a friend and we were talking about how, you know, it's, it's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. Maybe it will. Maybe that's the way God's going to do it in your life, but it's a process. When I say surrender everything, I mean your home, your family, your money, your possessions, your will, every bit of who you are. That's what God calls us to surrender to him. Can you do it? Can you accept his pure and perfect love? I do believe it's the key to being able to walk out life blessing, loving, and honoring him while you let him work through you to others. That's how we're going to know. People are going to know that we're his disciples. God has to do it to you so he can do it through you. Let God do it to you so he can do it through you. Because although some people don't believe it, we were all made with a hole in the center of our soul that only one thing's going to fit. Until you find that specific something, you're always going to be unfulfilled. Always. And the very specific thing is God himself. You were designed with an intense need for your creator. God. And without a relationship with him, you'll always be searching for something to fill that void. Don't search any longer. There's only one thing that's going to fill that void. And that's him. So if you can receive that now, if every one of you is ready to receive all that, then we can move on with what we're commanded to do. Are we ready? Have you received it? Do you believe it? Because the other thing is you can know it here, but not know it here. I don't want you just to know it. I want you to believe it. I want you to let it penetrate your heart. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That's John 13, 34 through 35. So at the time when this was spoken, they just, Jesus was just sitting at the table and, and having a meal with his disciples, and Judas just was kind of like, okay, I got to go. And Jesus said, whatever you're going to do, do it quickly, right? Go and do it. Jesus pushed the go button. He knew what was going to happen, and he pushed the go button, and this plan was set into place. Jesus knew he was going to be betrayed, and he still said, go ahead and do what you're going to do quickly. After sending, Jesus off, after sending Judas off, can you imagine what we would have felt like if I knew someone was going to betray me like that? I don't know that I'd feel so much love in my heart. But he did. He also knew that Peter was going to betray him. But he still loved him. Because God is love. It's made up of nothing else other than love. So how could his heart feel anything other than love for each of them? He continued to encourage and equipped 
his disciples. He spent time showing them, loving them. And now the new command was to do it. So he wasn't going to be there with them anymore, but he spent all this time showing them. He spent all this time putting all those tools in their tool belt. The fact that he said love one another wasn't new to them. They knew they were supposed to love each other. But this was different. He specifically called it a new command for a reason. Because the way that they needed to walk out this new command was to be witnesses to those all around them that they were Jesus' disciples. Because they had to love like he loved. Here's where the do it to me so you can do it to, through me falls into place. Jesus modeled love for them. We are also called to model Jesus' love. It's new because the standard by which it is now to be expressed that we are to love even as Christ loved the church, even if I loved you, it's one thing when you love your neighbor as yourself. Great thing to do. But in here, that's not what he's saying. He's not saying love them as you love yourself. He's saying love them like I loved you. And there's a difference. There's a difference. It's way deeper. It's way more powerful. He's saying don't just love when it's easy or convenient, but love always like I did, and always treat each other's the way that I treated them in love, the way that I treat you in love. Once we accept his love and his heart, which again, like I said, is only filled with love, we can walk this out just because God loves us. We need to show each other to our best ability that we can do this. You guys are awesome. <laughs> the best way that I can express what I mean when I say his heart is full of nothing but love is when I look at 1 Corinthians 13. When you look at this scripture, if God is love, we should put God's name in this when we read this passage. God is patient. I'm not always patient. God is kind. I'm not always kind. God does not envy. Hello? God does not boast. God is not proud. God does not dishonor others. God is not self-seeking, and he's not easily angered. Apparently, he wasn't Italian. God keeps no record of wrongs. God does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. God always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. God never fails. That's love, 100%. That's God, 100%. He's not asking us to be perfect at this. He's saying, this is what I want you to strive for. If you truly want to receive my love and you truly want me to work through you and push this love out to others, if you want to be my vessel to be used, and as I commanded you to love others as I have loved you, this is the kind of love I'm talking about. And in our humanness, this is really hard, isn't it? This truly is the Father's, the Father's heart. Serving others. Putting others first. Loving others, even when in every worldly sense they seem totally unlovable. Choosing to be kind to others in the midst of being picked on or talked down to or being abandoned. Making a choice to love as God would have. 
this kind of love is not the kind of love I talk about when I say, I love tacos. I love tacos. Tacos make me happy. Tacos fill this need in my belly for cheesy and gooey and all these things. I love tacos so much. The kids all know I love tacos. And I don't know if you've seen them walking around with shirts, especially all the McBrides have a shirt that says, Dee Dee loves me more than tacos. Because I want them to know it's more than that. It's more than the kind of love I express when I say I love tacos. I love your shirt. I love your hat. I love your shoes. I love everything about you. Still isn't to the level of love that God has for you. It's different. We freely throw that word love around so much that we get so confused on what it really means. Right? It's so easy to say those things to people. It's so easy to express that. We've we've devalued the word love. We've brought it down to a level that God's saying, no, here, bring it back. Love the way I love. When we're filled with God's love, we really understand and accept his heart and love for us. We can do and understand things that we wouldn't normally understand or normally do. Human, something happens and somebody wrongs me. My first thought should be, I'm going to breathe and I'm just going to love them through it. Whatever the circumstance, it's, whether it's about me or not, God would just love them in this moment. In my humanness, I can't say that's the first thought every time. But yet, there are times when I know, Melinda and I have talked and she's like, wow, that was really cool. And I'm like, whoo, that was really God. Because I know I couldn't do that myself. I know unless that I was ready to receive, unless I was in a place where I really felt the the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in me and, and the power of God in me, I could have never accomplished that, ever. Living in that, believing that, marinating in that, we can see the need to stop holding sin against others and forgive them as quickly as we ask God to forgive us. Think about that. How many times we're like, well, I eventually forgave them, right? That's not how God works, though. We've robbed ourselves and we robbed them of, of amazing blessings from God, of amazing experience and, and, and the presence of God because we chose not to forgive. But his love and his power and his spirit in us gives us the power to do that quickly as he would. Colossians 3, 12 through 14 says, therefore as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. That's a big order. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has grievances against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Love looks like sacrificial kindness and patience towards others. His love. Him working through me to others looks like that. I don't believe I have the power in myself at all to do any of that. But I believe with his help, with God, all things are possible. And if I allow him to continue to feed into me, if I allow him to continue to work on me, if I allow him to do that, if I make a choice to do that, all things are possible. Because love is choosing to give a person what they need most when they deserve it the least at great personal cost. 
I've had many a times in my life where God has done that for me. I felt so unworthy of anything from him. I felt like I was failing miserably. I felt like I just so disappointed him that, you know what, there's no way I'm going to get around this. And he loved me anyway. And he brought people around me to bless me. He brought people around me to remind me that I can stretch my arms as far as I want and I'll never, ever, ever be able to stretch farther than his love can reach. Can we give other people what they need most when they deserve it the least? Jesus did it. He was going to be betrayed. This started the go button, pushed this, this series of events that were leading him to the cross. And he loved anyway. He didn't sit there and talk to everybody and go, yeah, you know, pff, Judas, he's bad news, man. He is bad news. He's been stealing money. He's bad news. Just push him aside. Doesn't matter what happens to him. He didn't think, oh, Peter, he's bad news. He's going to deny me. Nope. He loved him. And he taught him what it felt like to be loved in our brokenness. Filled with his love, we can endure pain, forgive freely, avoid conflict, renew our strength, suppress or subdue the fears and bless others in ways that are going to really surprise you. God is definitely calling us to action. We live in a crazy, messed up world, people. It's a crazy, messed up world, but he's still large and in charge. He's still on the throne. He's still calling out to us saying, hello, I did it to you. This is the part where I want to do it through you. I've given you everything that you need. If you need more, come. It's a, it's a well that's overflowing. Come. I will give you everything you need so that you can stretch out your arms and love people that seem to be undesirable or unlovable. I could stretch out your arms and I could do so many amazing things if you make a choice to let me do it. The first time I, I stepped out and I was like, oh, this is scary, but I'm going to do this. I feel like God told me to talk to someone. So I spoke to them and I prayed with them and I, he gave me a picture and I reluctantly said it to them. It was freaking amazing in the end. Scared the crap out of me when I was doing it. But I knew that I knew that I knew that I had to be obedient because the thought in my head couldn't have been my thought. The feeling in my heart couldn't be my feelings. I knew this had nothing to do with me. I made a choice to walk it out. I made a choice to do it. You know, we do food pantry here. Again, we're making a choice to love people. We're making a choice to be there and to be God's hands and feet. When before we start pantry, we always pray, Lord Jesus, help us to be good representation of you. We are your hands and feet to 200 families that are coming here today. Let us be good examples of who you are. It may be the only time they come this close to a church. If we don't reflect God's love, if we aren't able to, to reach out our hands and let God work through us, that might be their only chance that they're going to see that kind of love. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing at work, wherever it is, we're, we're called to be a good representation of him. I ask that you just try to take a second and think 
of a time when you felt the most lost, when you felt farthest away from God, from others, when you felt at your lowest of low points. Think about that. Think about how horrible you felt. Think about how alone you felt. There are so many people out there feeling that exact same way on a daily basis. Alone, afraid, full of fear, no hope, riddled with anxiety. He's calling us to be bold. He's calling us to love like he would love. It hurts my heart when I see people in that position. It hurts my heart because I know some people very close to me that are feeling that way. They feel alone and abandoned and too far. But you're never too far. You're never too far. I believe God will put people in your life to lift you up. He'll put people in your life to, to speak in love, sometimes correction in love. He's done it for me. In my darkest times, in the times that I felt so alone, I let everything just come in the lies. I just feel like there are people here that are believing the lies of the enemy, and I say no more. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I bind and rebuke those thoughts. In the name of Jesus, I say you must flee. God's heart is a heart of love. He will heal. He will restore. He will never abandon you. He will always be there for you. Father God, I just ask that you just come and do your mighty healing. I pray, Lord Jesus, that your spirit will rest even heavier in this place. I thank you that you gave us your son to show us how much you love us. I pray, Father, that you help each and every one of us, especially in our low times, to remember we are never too far, that you're always there, and you always want to put your arms around us and hold us and tell us that we're loved. That you keep, I, I, I just see he keeps sending lifelines out to people, and they're like, oh, no, I'm not worthy. But you are not because of you, but because he said so. Father God, help us to live out this scripture, the new command, to not just love our neighbors as ourselves, but to love as you love us. 
change our way of thinking, to change our, our innermost being, to be overwhelmed and consumed and with you and your love and your kindness and your mercy. Lord Jesus, do it to us so you can do it through us. And give us hearts to make a choice to let that happen because you're not going to force it on us. You didn't create puppets. You're not a marionette. You, you, You gave us choice and free will because you love us. Help us, Lord God. Help us to be in a spirit of receiving all that you have for us. I pray that you just fill us all to overflowing, Lord God. Let your fog be all around us. No matter where we are or what we're doing, whether we're in our kitchen or we're at church, or we're in a grocery store. Let us sense your favor around us. Let us sense your presence around us. Speak the name of Jesus over my family here at the Vineyard Community Church. I speak Jesus for my family. I believe that God is saying, come to the table. I have a seat waiting for you. Come to the table and be fed. Come to the table and let me serve you. Because God's love is a serving love, not a receiving love. It's a love of service. It's about what he can do for us. It's about what he can do for you. It's not about what you do for him. really hard to go back to my notes and I can't. (laughs) If you can stand, will you please stand? Raise your hands, palms up to God. He wants to bless you today. He wants to open the heavens and shower on you today. But you need to be in a spirit of receiving. Lord Jesus, open your floodgates, Lord God. Open the door. Just wash over this place, Lord God. We are standing here in a spirit of receiving, Lord God. We ask, Lord Jesus, for every bit of everything you have for us today. Shower us, Lord. Shower it over us. Let it penetrate each and every bit of who we are. Wash over our heads, Lord God. Remove the things that are not of you. Remove the thoughts and the lies that have penetrated our minds. Wash them away. Wash away the stronghold of depression. Wash away the fears and anxiety. Wash us clean, Lord God. As you drench down through our shoulders, Lord God, and penetrate our heart. Show us, Father God, what it is that you have for us. Take those parts of our heart that have been hurt, are wounded, and are turning dark, and restore them, Lord God. 
Restore there our hearts, Lord God. Bring life and love and peace and happiness back into our hearts. Lord Jesus, all the way down to our feet. Let our feet be willing to do what you've called us to do, to walk in the direction you've called us to walk. Cleanse us, Lord. Cleanse us, Father God. Thank you, Father. More of you. Wash over us. I pray, Father God, that not one person walks out of here today without feeling that he's been touched or she has been touched by you. I pray that every person that walks out those doors into that mission field that you've called us to, into the world where you want to use us, that we can walk out these doors into that arena filled with your love, filled with your grace and your mercy and your peace, filled with hope. Love on us, Lord. Bless us. Amen. I know that God is doing ministry here. I know that he's here. And it doesn't have to stop. If anyone wants prayer, please come forward or turn to a neighbor and get some prayer. Receive it. Stop blocking it. Receive it. Let him love you so that he can teach you how to love others the way that he loves. Amen, Lord. Amazing love, how can it be? That you, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor. 